Oh, hello, you must be here for the job interview. Okay then, now I just have a few questions. Are you afraid of cows? Oh, small hands, well that's okay. God gave us two. Now here at Morning Glory, we value a positive work environment and a good stroke, if you know what I mean. And I have good news for you, you're hired! <sighs> Hello everybody, my name is Courtney and welcome to my channel. This is where I talk about books I love, books I like, and everything in between, and I think today this qualifies as in between. I am just gonna keep this wig on because I just got back from the gym and I look like shite. And you might also be wondering what I am doing with this giant bottle, but I will get to that later. For now, I would love to tell you guys the book that I will be talking about today, and that is Morning Glory Milking Farm by C.M. Nicosta. Duh. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. I hope I am, but if not, I apologize. Ugh, where do I start with this book? I have to say that before I go into it, I did like it. Um, I enjoyed it. I, I, I wanted to live in Cambric Creek. So Morning Glory Milking Farm is about a girl who I found very relatable. And actually I wrote the names down because I constantly say that I can't remember names. And I thought people might get sick of me saying um, like girl with curly hair or guy with hooves. Uh, so I actually did write down the names and the names are, let me find it really fast. I have notes. I, I mean, I thought I did. They're not organized. I didn't say they were organized. Oh, you know what? They, I have separate notes, hold on. So I have this like OCD thing, um, so if I write in a notebook and my writing starts getting sloppy, which it always does because I start writing really fast, then I have to tear out that page and then a couple days later when I'm feeling all refreshed I have to write it all down again in better handwriting. So that's what I did. So I ripped out the page because I already took the notes um, about this book and I didn't want to rewrite them. So I have my notes. I have my notes for Morning Glory Milking Farm. First, the name of the female main character is Violet. She has a college education. She wants to do more with her life, but she also needs a job. She's very much like people her age, don't wanna go home, don't wanna admit defeat. Her parents keep wanting to wanting her to go home to just um, you know take a breather and she doesn't want to. Uh, so she decides to get a low-end job in um, what is called Cambric, uh, I think it's Cambric, 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 I don't know, um, Cambric Creek. And that job is at Morning Glory Milking Farm. I honestly can't remember if she has any suspicion about what the milking farm does, um, but she goes to this job interview. Everybody's super nice. Everybody like this. This town is very fairy tale like. The way it was described, it made me want to live there, especially because they have this coffee shop that sells a. Hold on, it's in my notes. Honeycomb latte. This town felt very welcoming, and it's very so like when you're walking through this town. Violet is human, but she's walking through this town and there's all these like inhuman creatures. There's there's vampires, there's minotaurs, there's mothmen, um, you know, there's all kinds of different creatures, like a uh, utopian kind of feel to it. And I loved that. Like I was so engrossed in that like atmosphere. But anyways, so she gets this job at this, this milking farm and uh, I don't, again, I don't know if she realizes exactly what the job entails, but when she gets there, they're kind of giving them, giving her a tour, and this, this milking farm, they do milk, but they milk different things, not milk. So, minotaurs in this world, I guess their, their semen, like, is used for fertility pills, for people. I don't know if it's just humans or just like anyone in general, but they're basically used to make Viagra for other creatures. Violet's job at this milking farm is to basically give handies out to giant minotaur men looking to make a few bucks. So uh, in this world, pretty much every minotaur, no matter their position, no matter their age, 
basically goes to this milking farm. They make up all these nicknames for the type of customer or, or uh, I don't know, client. I guess that they are. There are minotaurs that like to get in and out like super fast, the ones that had like a kink for the whole milking situation um, and liked the, the milkers to uh, like wear costumes and stuff like that. It was weird. It was a weird environment, but the relatable part of it was that Violet also thought it was a weird environment. Sometimes I get disconnected from these these kind of stories because I'm like, how how are you going through your, your routine thinking this is normal? But Violet didn't think this was normal either. Violet, our main character, thought it was very strange she had an education and I relate to that because I went to school for fashion I spent a lot of money on it I'm pretty sure I am 35 I just turned 35 I'm pretty sure I just paid off my student loans like two years ago and I graduated in 2008 so I, I understand this whole like um, need to get a job in your field or do something more with your life when you you spent so much time and effort on having a college education. She kind of you know sucks it up and she gets this job. She watches all of these like training videos where they teach you how to clean your station, how to milk these manatars uh, and she she's very much like by the book. Violet is very much, she wants to be perfect at everything she does the first time. And I also related to that because I am somebody that wants to be good at everything that I do, no matter what. So she, she works her ass off to, to get good at milking before she starts milking. It is so weird to be calling it milking because it's not milking. So she starts doing her job and she's starting to get to know the different kinds of clients that they're getting. Um, and this one client comes in and I honestly forgot what it is called. Clock watchers. Is, is it clock watchers? I think they're clock watchers. They're usually the ones that come in and they have a lot on their plates. They're usually businessmen and they want to get in and out really fast. So she gets this client and he wants to get in and out. He's, he just like, he's there to just jizz and go. They're usually kind of rude. They don't want to be there very long. They just want it to like happen and that's it. They don't want to talk. So he, he comes off being very rude. So she gives him the hand job of a lifetime. He loves it. And CM goes into a lot of detail about how she did it uh, and the techniques that she used with her little hands. And um, uh, he gets attached. Our, our Minotaur, whose name is Rorik, Rorik? I don't know how to spell that, or I don't know how to pronounce that. I think it's Rorik. Uh, but he gets very attached to her particular touch, and he starts to request her every time, which is a thing that some Minotaurs do. They request certain, I don't even know what they would be called, certain hand job givers. And uh, so he starts to request her. <laughs> So the whole process of this, they, and I thought this was like, and I really hope that CM wanted people to laugh about this and just have a good time because I definitely was laughing and having a good time because I was laughing. So they, they have these giant chairs, right? And they kind of like lay down like stomach. Uh, like lay on their stomach on these big chairs and um, they, they're covered in upholstery which I thought was really ick. I don't even like sitting on couches that are upholstery like I usually like sitting on couches that are leather or something because I just imagine all of the like germs that are like in the upholstery that you can't just wipe off with a Lysol wipe um, and I thought it was weird that these chairs are made of upholstery and not something that you could disinfect because they're all you know sweating and 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 jizzing and but anyways that's that's beside the point that's just something that like my brain went there um it didn't need to go there i'm sure other people's brains don't go there but it went there so anyways so they sit down or or like they straddle this chair that is above the girl in her you know with her hands ready um and their uh their thing goes through a hole I don't really know why it has to go through a hole. Uh, I, there's a lot of like, it's it's a weird contraption and it goes through a hole and then they just work it to completion. And right when they're about to, you know, do the thing um, and empty out, they, uh, they attach them to a machine, much like the machines that you might see at a milking farm. These little suctions to them. And it, it like, it, it, they, it, goes into a bottle 
um, a 24 ounce bottle to be exact. And uh, where did my thing go? Where did my prop go? Oh, um, to give you a visual of what 24 ounces is, this is 24 ounces, okay? This is 24 ounces. I'm pretty sure my bladder doesn't even hold this much. Um, but this is how much, like, I mean, I just imagine like an endless stream. Like you could literally, those little milk bottles that you see in movies and stuff, and sometimes you can get them at supermarkets. I mean, it fills a whole one of those. They fill bottles with this and then they send them off to be made into to Viagra pills, like sex pills, I guess. Um, this was just outrageous to me. Oh wow, there's like a weird thing on the bottom of this that looks kind of cool. I am sure it was unintentional, but like my artist brain is kind of intrigued. Let me see, I don't even know. I am very curious what the average, uh, I don't even know what to call it. Um, how much does the average man jizz? <laughs> so the average man, human man will ejaculate one to five milliliters of semen. Uh, I don't know what that is in, in ounces. Milli milliliters to ounces. Okay, so one milliliter is, what, that can't be right. One milliliter is 0 0.03 ounces. How? That is so, wait, what is five? What is five milliliters? Cause that's, I guess like the, the av like the higher end of the average. Okay, so one point, point one seven fluid ounces. So the average man, I mean, what is that? That's like a tablespoon, not even a tablespoon. That is like a teaspoon, right? I might be wrong, but that sounds like very little. And this guy, these menatars, like where are they keeping all that? Holy Christ. Um, she's very good at her job, by the way. She has teeny little hands and they're very nimble and they do do very well. And I guess like every morning you come in and you have a, like a pile of your appointments and you get like these little stickers or something on the guys that actually, or the minotaurs that actually request you. And he starts requesting her. They start getting into conversations. They talk to each other. They get to know each other. It's kind of cute. Uh, there were a lot of moments where I forgot that he had a cow head um, or bull head uh, because their relationship is very like organic and it, it, it was cute and it made sense. But they, they continue to talk. Rorik is very successful, by the way. And I guess in this universe, the, the nose ring that um, bulls have or in this case minotaurs is a marriage thing kind of like uh like a ring that you that humans you know we have a ring on our ring finger when we're married um so when she learns that she's a little bit insecure and that is a whole relationship thing that you'll just have to find out if you read this book so they start seeing each other outside of the milking farm our violet has always loved coffee loved fancy coffee but she always gets the cheap stuff because she's broke and that's the reason that why she got this job. And when she starts getting a paycheck again, she's really excited to go this to this really fancy coffee shop. I don't remember the name of the coffee shop, but she wants to go to this fancy coffee shop in Cambrick Creek. The latte that she gets, which is suggested to her by the barista, I believe, is a honeycomb latte. And I don't know if I've ever seen that before in a real coffee shop. And if I have, that I just don't remember, but if it doesn't exist, it should exist because it sounds so good. When she goes there finally, obviously, Rorik, Rorik is there. They they have their little like date at the coffee shop. Not really a date, it's a sort of date. He buys her coffee. Uh, they talk again. And then, you know, they uh, once a week she gives him a really excellent hand job and um, he gets so addicted to it that they just can't, they just start being inseparable and they build this uh, cute relationship, like I said, and it grows into um, something more. And I don't think I mentioned this, but at the very beginning, like when she sees him for the first time, she thinks he is delectable. I don't know how you can think somebody with a face of a cow bull um, is delectable or sexy, but I guess like the broad shoulders really do it for her. I want to talk really quick about their their first 
sexy moment. First of all, I don't understand how you can kiss a cow face because the, there's not really lips. It's like a big old snout and a big old tongue. Like you can't even fit that tongue in your mouth. But so they do, they start, you know, getting physical. Before their first time, Rourke obviously says you need to prepare because I am very large, which you know because you give me hand drops every week. But she mentions that she isn't um, a stretch queen. And if you don't know what that is, just Google it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna answer that for you. But she mentions that, and she mentions because she is not that, and Rurik is um, as described in the book as big as a fist. Like are you fucking kidding me? Uh, when they have their first like coupling, um, he he prepares her because you know he doesn't want to hurt her. And uh, this is something that I kind of complain about in my head about every book where the the male is that big. I'm like, that is that is not a thing. And I, all of these books are fantasy, so I get it. Like you're just supposed to suspend reality, but I don't, That it's impossible. That is not physically possible to do without injuring somebody if they are not fully prepared. But in this book, she is fine. Everything's great. She loved it. So the, the part that like really separated me from this whole romance, romance thing was he, he goes down on her in one scene and it's fully described but i grew up on a farm around a lot of cows and one thing i know for certain is that cows drool and leak from their noses a lot and i think i really got like separated like i i couldn't get into that particular part of it i remember as a kid petting our neighbor's cow because they had a pet cow um, and I remember like it would just gross me out because it would just be so slimy and it was always sticking like they cows do this thing where they stick their tongue out and it, it goes up their nose and they just like they do that constantly there's just like licking snot out of their nose it's a thing and uh, so I couldn't get into those parts of it um, Maybe other people can, but I just, I literally grew up that way and that I saw a lot of that. And I remember trying to pet that pet cow. His name was Norman. And I used to try and pet him. And as soon as his tongue would come out, I would snap my hand back because I was like, I don't want that. That's, that's so much slime. And then I would kind of avoid his tongue because I was like, I want to pet you, but I don't want to get all slobbery. When he did the thing, um, the sexy thing to her sexy area with his mouth, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I just couldn't. And I did my best to like, like imagine him not being a, a cow. Um, but sometimes it didn't work. Besides all of my like little side notes about how weird it was to imagine a minotaur and a human together, this actually was a really adorable book. Like I actually really loved it. And uh, I really didn't expect to love it because I have seen this book everywhere on Instagram and everybody's raving about it. And the original cover, which I actually like more because it's more ridiculous, <laughs> was like a milk bottle with like the rubber gloves. And I just thought it was so hilarious when I actually understood what the book was about. Uh, but I was avoiding reading it because I was like, I don't know if I've gone that far into the abyss to pick that book up and intentionally read it. But I did read it. I read it and I loved it. I think this is a book for the veterans of monster romance because it's not exactly something you just pick up when you've never read romance or smut. It's not something that you, you pick up and you're like, oh, I wanna delve into this. It's really not that. It's something that you pick up if you have read other books before that are strange and out of this world. But if you are somebody that likes that kind of stuff, I absolutely would recommend it. It was, it was different. It was weird. It was cute. It was a little bit like, uh, like very fairy tale like, but very perfect. Like everything just felt perfect. Like everyone was just coexisting and getting along, and it was really cute. And uh, I would absolutely visit Cambric Creek to be honest. I don't know if I would try and pick up a Minotaur boyfriend, but I would absolutely visit it, and I would probably have fun, and I would love to get myself a honeycomb latte. Their relationship was really cute. And like I said, I kind of forgot that he was not human in a lot of parts because they just had these very genuine conversations. I guess this this falls under my, um, I read it so you don't have to, but you should.
I loved it. I know that there are other books in this series. I will be picking those up. I don't know if I'll do videos on them. If you want me to do videos on them, let me know. If not, then uh, I'll just read them for fun. And please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Comment some weird romance books uh, for me so that I can start building up a bigger list. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Bye.